GM, GM. GM. How we doing? How we doing? Got into a little bit of some technical difficulties. Um, it wouldn't be something. Like it wouldn't be a, a WGMI show without it at this point. <laughs> but we're in business. Awesome, awesome. Um, so it's merge merge day, merge completion day. Did you stay up late and uh, and watch the merge? I, I went to bed personally on the East Coast. I don't know um, if you stayed up or not. No, I did not. I did not. I was. Uh, I was trying to go to bed nice and early, so I, I missed it. Um, so to be honest, I have no idea what happened with the merge. I From what I saw on Twitter, it seems like everything went smoothly. Um, I might need you, honestly, to, to explain it to me. might maybe break it down a little bit as far as uh, um, what's going on, um, if, you don't, if you don't mind or if you, if you know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I've looked into it a bit this morning after waking up, checked in. I mean, it seemed like, you know, best case scenario, it was a, a non-event event. Um, things went smooth. You know, I think it was around like 2.43 a.m. Eastern that uh, the merge kind of took place. The first proof of stake block was completed. And after 15 minutes, it was finalized. And um, we've kind of been on our merry way. And, you know, all was all is to be expected right now, like everything that's going on. Um, there's there's no difference in terms of looking at it as you're interacting with the ETH chain today. You're going to see, you know, the same transaction times, the same gas costs. It's just that the back end now being secured by proof of stake is going to be um, no longer energy intensive. It, we're saving all of that energy that was used for the proof of work validation. Now everything is secured via proof of stake. So we're seeing that on the back end, front end, business as usual, which I'd say is kind of the ideal outcome from uh, the merge last night, which is good, bullish. That, that's that's all you can ask for. That's all you can ask for. And I uh, I actually have I, I was going through some things and I, I actually want your opinion on on what you think for a couple of them. As far as I know, we, we talked about it a little bit yesterday as far as what, what does the merge mean specifically for the NFT world? Is this something that gets you excited? And if so, why does it get you excited? Um, and I mean, I want, I want to talk about that a little bit because um, maybe it's the, the, the hope the hope that we can we can turn things around a little bit. But I, I do think we, we will see some brighter days ahead. I don't know in what capacity or who will be the one that takes advantage of it. But um, if you don't mind, Rad, I'd love to just take us straight to the morning uh, report and uh, just break down everything that's been going on with the market over the last 24 hours before passing it on to you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, while you kind of pull that up, you know, what you said with the merge, I mean, I, I'm expecting, uh, well, I, th I think, to turn things around, kind of what you were saying, it, um, along with, you know, is this merge going to change that? Um, you know, things had been, you know, slower, lower volume. And I think what's required to turn that around a bit is, you know, more users, more people actively, you know, transacting on Ethereum, more people interested in NFTs in general. And I think that comes with adoption. And I think the merge was a good first step towards greater adoption. I think we'll see more Web2 companies jumping in um, now that that kind of environmental issue specter is kind of off its back. But that being said, I'll kind of let you jump in, head into the, the morning market report, give us a, a little bit of an update of what happened overnight, what we're looking at today. Uh, love to hear it. All right, all right, all right. So if we jump to the open sea volume over the last 24 hours, we did 10 under 10 point, right under 10.5 million, which is a local low we've been we've had a few days that have hit that so it's not too surprising um but it, there wasn't too much activity going on it sounded like people were pretty um were holding on to what they had um i don't blame them personally i didn't make any transaction yesterday either um crypto punks led the way once again ray i know we talked about that yesterday um we saw board apes get in there as well getting in on the action but as Honestly, as usual, we saw the top four being all Yuga assets. What was interesting to see was um, you go to the right side. So I'm looking at seven day and one day listings here. A lot of drop offs here. So it was interesting to see that um, there was a lot of green there, which we don't typically see. Um, it was definitely something noteworthy I wanted to point out. Um, but as far as like what big one day movers, um, Punks up to ETH to now a 66 ETH floor. X copy moving a little bit as well. Had a little bit of volume there. Um, the dogs moving a little bit. They're up 0.5 ETH. Mutants as well. Um, Ranga. Ray, I've been seeing them everywhere. I don't know if you know too much about it, but it, I was certainly surprised to see um, 
them continuing to hold up and having a reasonable amount of volume, high amount of sales, leading the sales um, was we see these kind of um, lower priced um, assets, but we see Ranga as well, 214 sales yesterday. One of the things I was curious about, Ray, is, is uh, I'm starting to see some, some floors that I personally wasn't expecting to see. Um, I'm seeing a world of women come up with, with some volume and maybe showing some signs of life. They had 34 sales yesterday. I was looking at the floor yesterday. Um, and I was, I was a little bit surprised. I mean, I, I'm curious if a, you own any world of women and B, if you don't, at what price would you get in on this at? I mean, I, I think we're almost at January early January prices. Um, I'm curious, like, are you, do you have a, a price point that you're looking to buy in at some of these more established projects at or collections at? Yeah. I mean, it's tough. I, I think that there will be volume coming back to these projects post-merge. Um, I think it's just a matter of, you know, we keep testing these bottoms. We keep going down and down. Um, we see some, you know, pullbacks, um, some, some, solid price action when announcements are made for these blue chips, but then we kind of see it, you know, continuing to taper off. I think a lot of people are on the sidelines right now with capital to deploy into these projects that are funded, um, that have, you know, a solid team around them that are potentially VC backed. Um, I think it's for me, it's kind of a wait and see, like, I'm not going to be the first one to jump in and, and guess the bottom. You know, if I see it moving up, you know, for a few days, if it's one of those blue chips that I've had my eye on that, that may potentially, um, you know, kind of, provide long-term value. I won't hesitate jumping in there, but I'm not going to be the one who kind of jumps in and tries to, tries to time the bottom right now. Uh, I think there's too much volatility. Right. And I think that we're going to need to see a few more catalysts before we really kind of get back into bull season. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I feel the same way. I kind of look at it as like, Hey, I I'd rather miss out on maybe that initial pump. If it means that it, it's, it's when people are starting to go back in and the fear is going down a little bit. I was also looking at, goblin town yesterday um it went sub one eth um crawled back up to above but it is interesting seeing how twitter reacts that and social media reacts that when um before it, when they were pumping and they were eight nine eth everyone was saying hey it's because they're doing something different because they don't have a roadmap the typical communication and now that they're back below one eth people are saying hey it's because they don't have the right communication. It's because they, they don't have a roadmap and, and that's not going to fly anymore. <laughs> so that, that was, uh, was interesting to see. Um, but it, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, look, the, these, these are all things I'm starting to watch. Um, look, I mean, I know you're a big Moonbird guy. Um, they got below $15,000 for the first time, basically since they minted. Um, so that's definitely something noteworthy to see and, and um, something I, I am, am looking at. And I, I was personally in disbelief um, that they're kind of trending in this direction. But at the same time, it's just it's the very few people that are the market makers and the market movers at the end of the day. Right. So all it takes is 10, 15 people to want to sell and it affects the price in this way. Um, but it can have that that kind of. Um, waterfall effect to a certain extent where everything starts moving as a result and, and people start panicking. Um, any, any other thoughts here, Ray? I mean, as, as you're going through, does anything else stand out to you? Um, if not, I'll kind of let you take it from here and move into the news of the day. Yeah. I just have one thing that um, I'm going to add here. I'm going to kind of show um, a chart that I've been um, watching a bit for Moonbirds. Um to kind of give a little bit of context and kind of showing like where we are in the market and what we're expecting. So I have a graph that I kind of refer back to basically, you know, August 1st, um, kind of looking at how Moonbirds have acted with um, listings and floor price. And, you know, we, we kind of peaked seeing listings around 200. You know, that, that was, you know, I think an all time high for listings outside of those first few days or outside of when nesting went live. Um, we've kind of seen that, you know, drop off a good amount here um, looking at this, this graph, this green line here. Uh, where we had 200 listings before, you know, we're back down in the 120 range. Um, that's slowly been going down, and yet the floor price is kind of tracking with it. Um, I think it just showed, it goes to show kind of the lack of liquidity in the market. Even though listings are going down, there's not, you know, the same amount of buyers on the other side as there may have been during the bull season. So, like I said, I'm going to be kind of watching those metrics, and, you know, when that bull run does 
kind of come back, you know, seeing these low listing counts on some of these projects, um, it, those floors get eaten up pretty quickly and um, kind of jump back up to, to levels that they've been at before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like everyone is, is kind of hoping and, and move, hoping for, for this turnaround in narrative in, um, in kind of mentality, but there is just kind of that, that lack of money. Um, one of my thoughts, the things that I was thinking about is like, Hey, now that this kind of environmental kind of a concern with regarding Ethereum is, is starting to go away with the merge. Um, I think with that, like we talked about yesterday, um, we'll see some some new Web2 companies enter this space. I'm very curious to see how they do it, um, whether it's through partnerships or whether it's them doing it themselves. Um, but I, I also think the market is getting a little bit, I don't know if it's smarter or less reactive to new. Uh, I, I rarely nowadays see um, something move or a collection price move just around the, like an announcement of a partnership or an announcement of an airdrop or anything, anything like that. Um, these old floor and market shakers now are not really doing anything anymore. Right. Or if, if a big player buys into a, a collection, it doesn't really mean anything anymore. Right. So I will be very careful to see like, Hey, what, what can some of these other collections do to stay relevant? Um, kind of shake out the noise and, and really build out this this community and continue to keep them engaged um, will definitely be something that I'm, I'm going to continue to try to to watch for and, and keep an eye on as um, hopefully more Web2 companies enter the space and, and with it comes more money. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely something to watch. And, you know, we need those um, additional users to kind of help, you know, drive the volume, bring some more people back and take some of that money that's been waiting on the side and deploy it again in a way that, you know, is smart and will kind of generate those returns. Um, kind of switching gears here, um, we'll jump on the news from the news feed. Um, overnight, we had some new updates come in from our analysts and contributors. Um, starting off um, with a sandbox, Phase World, uh, there's a plot of land in the sandbox owned by Phase World, and there will be individual um, plots surrounding that um, that will be available for purchase by the public. Um, Sandbox kind of has a medium article about it. Uh, you can take a look, see exactly when that is going to start. Um, I think they haven't announced a start date yet, but it's definitely something that's coming. Keeping an eye on Sandbox personally. I know they had a big run um, maybe a month or there maybe maybe about this time last year um, during the kind of real estate and land craze that we saw um, take over the NFT world. I know they're making big pushes right now with a bunch of partner projects. Um, in the sandbox, they're looking at, um, you know, having these special events for different different avatars, different holders, Steve Aoki, People of Crypto, Clonex, uh, World of Women, Board Yacht Club, Snoop Dogg's avatars, Wow Galaxy. So they've been kind of pushing these for the, the beta three season or the alpha three season. Um, they're seeing we're seeing some more sales that may generate some revenue and attention. Interesting to watch. Have theirs. you have you used have you used Sandbox before? Do you have any any thoughts on on what it looks like? Is it appealing? I, I personally have never used. It, so I'm curious your your thoughts on it. I've looked into purchasing plots. I've watched a few streams of the gameplay. Uh, I personally haven't participated. Uh, something that would require a bit more time than I have right now, to be honest, to actually participate in the gameplay. But definitely something to watch. You know, if they can build a game that is you know fun and you know can get people interested and involved and they definitely you know have a niche in this market if you can bring the users in based on the fun and then you can kind of have this extra layer of assets and ownership of assets that's kind of what the blockchain and web3 gaming is all about so definitely keeping an eye on it uh, there hasn't been anything that i've seen from the outside that has given me like the aha moment we're here um, i'm assuming that it's going to take somebody who's on the inside to provide that so Definitely something to watch well, out for and definitely something to take a look at. With with this phase world um, going live for, for fans, I thought that was something that was super impressive. I mean, I, I personally had no idea it, what was going on there. Um, that seems kind of noteworthy. Um, I'm pretty sure he has a like a massive following in the um, traditional gaming world. So I, I'm very curious to see how that turns out. But more importantly, kind of watching – what the general sentiment is around that from their fans. Is that something where they're getting excited about it or they're um, more on the skeptical side? 
Yeah, definitely. You know, they're a big name in gaming. Um, interesting to read a bit more about this. It looks like we're going to see the land sale um, 2023. We'll hear more details later, but you know, that could be, you know, a big entry and a big group of people that haven't been exposed before getting exposed. So definitely something to watch out for. Um, I agree. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll be watching. I'll be trying to get some research into that today. And if I, if I find anything, I'll definitely, um, I'll, I'll keep you in the loop and I'll keep anyone listening in the loop as well. Yeah, sounds good. I'm going to keep going down the news here. We had some new collab council picks for premit. Um, we've got uh, the B-Bots. We have uh, Jeremy Fall Project and um, probably a label, a few entries. Easy one click out from our news feed to get to these. Um, definitely looking at providing our premit users with these updates. As these are announced, these are you know generally no risk, no low effort um, picks that you know have... I'd say a higher than average rate of potentially paying out if you get selected um, as they do a little bit of curation on their side. So always good to enter in these picks. It doesn't take much time. Definitely get your bang for your buck. And, you know, we're notifying all of the holders of pre-mint um, collector's passes via our newsfeed of all of these opportunities. Um, a non-collab council pick, um, quadruple, quadruple witching hour uh, newsletter. They're running a giveaway um, where you can win um, a, a handful of NFTs, including some of ours and access to, to trading view as well. So a valuable um, raffle here. Only one winner, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to enter. Low barrier to entry. Um, definitely recommend um, entering in that as well for, you know, a good chance. Well, not a good chance, but a chance at winning a very good prize. Um, so this kind of goes to show some of the utility of our news feed tool that we have at WGMI. We want to make sure that, you know, as a holder, you're aware of some of these opportunities that you have for your holdings. You know, I'm not getting these pre-mint um, collab picks push to me like on a regular basis. I have to, you know, go to their site, check my allow list offers, make sure I'm entered into all the ones that are there with the, with the news feed tool. We're pushing that information out to you. If you're holding a, a pre-mint pass, we're letting you know what to enter into uh, low barrier of entry, easy to enter good chance of uh, potential um, gain. So we want to maximize your utility of your holdings. Pre-mint is a great example of how we provide that um, access of the news feed and all these WGMI tools um, through is available through our all access NFT pass. If you go to WGMI.io, we are currently minting. Mint is open right now. You can mint your all access beta NFT that gives you access to all WGMI tooling, portfolio, graphs, charts, project explorer through the end of the year. Um, also provides benefits going forward as well. So that is how you get access to the tools that we're showing you today. But, but that being said, I'm going to kind of run on with the news here. Um, we saw Bobu return from space yesterday with Azuki. Um, Bobu was a mint a 0.01 uh, quite a while ago. Uh, it was a, a large collection. Um, and April, they sent Bobu on a ledger into space. They kind of built it as the first NFT in space. And yesterday, they released a tweet showing kind of Bobu falling, um, lighting a spaceship on fire, falling out of the sky. Um, drove a bit of hype and a bit of volume yesterday. I think we saw Bobu run from 0.027 to. I think where we're sitting now at 0 .04, 0 0.044, so almost a 2x from yesterday. Um, I know some people are holding, you know, a large chunk of these. I believe there's a 50k supply, 11k owners right now. Um, interesting to watch and see, kind of see where they take this going forward. I know we had a, a decent run um, where we kind of ran to 0 0.2 earlier in the year. Um, if there's any, you know, defined utility around this or a further announcement, this this could be a good entry point. It's already pumped 2x from where it was, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Keep an eye on our news. We'll keep you updated with our um, Azuki contributor, ONG. Does a great job of breaking down and letting you know exactly what's going on in the Azuki space. Moving on, um, we have a couple live events from Quantum Key that are uh, occurring uh, in the next few days. If you have a Quantum Key, um, you can you know RSVP to these events. There's one at the Quantum Studio in LA, and they're also throwing a party in New York. The New York party is today. Um, Thursday, 915. Uh, there's an RSPP link on our newsfeed um, and the LA events is too. one on Saturday, one on Sunday. So check that out if you're in those areas. Definitely would be cool to meet some of the team out there. Check out the IRL minting. They have um, a good benefit if you have one of those quantum keys. Uh, kind of moving on from there. Let's see what we have. Uh, some Moonbird uh, traits and artwork data now available. Um, Proof released yesterday, uh, GitHub, of all of the artwork for not only the birds, but also the individual traits. So if you're a builder or somebody looking to get involved and maybe do some derivatives, do some sort of CCO, 
uh, mash up to you know some kind of creation that'll be useful to have those assets. I believe they have PNGs and SVG files for all the traits and Moonbirds. So cool to see. Definitely um, love that they're pushing and moving more towards this uh, CCO, embrace the community, embrace the creators uh, style. And I think the more they push there, um, the, the better results they'll see from their community. Uh, we have an upcoming drop here. I'm not too familiar with Art Gobblers personally. Um, it looks like it's uh, an artist, somebody who was involved with Rick and Morty potentially. Um, but I've seen some hype on it on social media. They have an interesting website where you can kind of play around, do some drawing. I think they're trying to uh, like decentralize art in OA is kind of their tagline. I'm not exactly sure what the NFT will look like or what the pr value proposition will be. Um, but, you know, their kind of tagline here, self-sustained ecosystem centered around creating and collecting the coolest art in the universe. So interesting to see what happens there and what the value proposition is there. You know, when you hear about... One a TV show uh, personality like Rick and Morty, it kind of makes you think, oh, is this gonna is this gonna run or have those days ended? I know you have a bit to add on that, Clemente. Right. I know uh we we've we've had a fair share of talking about the the other the other Rick and Morty related uh NFT project. It was uh Crapopolis Crap Chickens um from Dan Harmon who was who's from Rick and Morty if I'm not mistaken. Um I was super excited about that. I mean, I, I was looking at it and like, man, that's a big creator looking at getting into the space. Um, the utility of what they were doing, it looked very well structured. And then they lost all momentum because they, they turned it into a PFP project of, of chickens. So they lost so much momentum there. So I'm, I'm from what I saw before, I'm, I'm very cautiously um, bearish on it. Obviously I don't know too much about it, but um it's it's we're learning that it's very hard to get into this nft space at the moment because unless you do something to onboard your current fan base into this space you're appealing to a very niche crowd a very i think more more mature crowd that's looking for for something unique within the nft space and and has a rather short lifespan or not life not lifespan but attention span so appealing to those is very difficult and if you're not very in touch with the space it's hard to make something that that uh that's going to take the space forward um and get rewarded for doing it so we'll keep an eye on that for sure yeah definitely i mean you see these follower accounts for some of the creators it didn't kind of it doesn't always you know translate to potential buyers and users and you looked at you know cool man's it's had a success early kind of i think that was kind of one of the last few you know web two transitions from like a media standpoint over to web three where you know he had you know millions of youtube followers watching his content that minted out that ran pretty well um and then it's kind of as that faded away you, you kind of haven't seen many of these media entities entering in and having that sustained success so definitely something to watch out it doesn't seem like he's basing it much on the actual web two um products mm. that he's made it's kind of something separate entirely it seems so a bit different different than the value proposition for crapopolis and i'm, I'm still kind of cautiously almost bullish on that project the more I read about it and the more I take in um it seems like they made some mistakes uh maybe I don't know I I know, understand we, we we had that take about the you know the chickens being a, a very under like a very below average PFP but I the more I read it it's, it's almost like you don't want to grow an attachment to these chickens as they're kind of traded for currency and and in the show and then will be as well um kind of in web three so they have more things coming Definitely recommend you look into what they're doing over there. It's different. I'll, it's exciting. I'll check and them it, out. Yeah. And it's, it's, it comes back to, you know, talking about onboarding more of these Web2 companies. Something to watch for sure as they're doing it in an interesting and, uh, you know, new way that we haven't quite seen yet. But moving on from there, um, definitely check out, you know, keep our gobblers on your radar. Something to watch. I think it's a project that is, you know, building will have, you know, some sort of a, hopefully successful mint definitely something to watch if you get on an allow list through um some means i would recommend it um keep notifications on their twitter etc um kind of moving on as well we had a um a raffle for pixel vault i'm personally not too familiar with pixel vault um apparently if you're holding a few of these different nfts there was a snapshot done and you're probably provided into um a raffle for some mint pass two nfts um, good to know. Just double checking. It doesn't look like there's any action needed, but you could be part of this raffle um, from this retroactive snapshot. Keep your eye out for potentially winning one of these mint passes. 
um, for Pixel Vault Mint Pass 2. And kind of finishing up here, the last new note of the day, uh, Adam Bomb Squad holders, a few of them are getting now royalties for physical merch, which is cool and kind of been the plan for a bit for the Adam Bomb Squad collection. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different assets here are, are now getting 10% royalties for their bombs um, being sold on the merch. Um, a snapshot of those owners was taken, uh, looks like Monday, um, and you can kind of claim your royalties on the site if you had owned one of those. So cool um, RL uh, tie here, seeing that this has been the plan for a while. It's cool to see this kind of being distributed. I don't know if you have any what thoughts. I, what I will say part. is it is – so I, I looked into it. It's distributed via um, Atom Bomb gift cards. Ah. So you don't you don't get cash. You don't get ETH or anything like that. Um, they're giving it to you via gift cards. My thought process is just they, they want to be um, compliant with the security laws and all that stuff, which makes sense. But I think either way, it's definitely cool that they're, um, that they're doing this. Yeah, that's awesome. I think, yeah, I think just like you said, I think that's probably saving them from the security, you know, eyeballs coming in and, and picking that apart. Smart play by them. Um, I still need to send my mech on his journey. So we'll leave that one unread for now. But that's it for the news today. Um, I, don't, I think we can probably wrap up here. We went a little bit over, but after a, a slower start, we kind of got a lot of information uh, jam packed into the show. Uh, feel like I'm a bit more prepared for the day now, ready to go. Do you have anything you're looking out for today, Clemente? I, I'm just going to try to learn a little bit more, more about the merge and see just what the general sentiment is about it. One of the things, if you could, if you have uh, the chart creator on you, um, if you could quickly whip up um, Grumple's Goblin Town and the, the McGoblin uh, chart since August, I think it's super interesting seeing how that that played out. Um, if yeah, if you're able to cook that up, um, I just it's been so interesting watching how they've have they've been they've been putting this together. Um, I'll give you the grumbles and the goblins for now. You just want to look at uh, floor price. Yeah, let's just do floor. And we have um, the grumbles. They, they have the. They don't. The thing that I've I've noticed is that these guys don't move in. Um, they don't move in unis in unison. So they they have obviously a little bit of overall trend. They've been down trending for the last about month and a half, um, which is expected. Which I mean, but they they were trying these new things, these deflation tactics to try to maintain the supply while also expanding their ecosystem. Um, but it, one of the things I was looking at is if you have Goblin Town in there as well as like it uh there there's things that pump and there's other things that move down so um just this is just the one thing i'm going to be looking for today is like hey what what's moving over the other and why and, and try to learn about the this ecosystem but it sounds like look my theory on this is i i personally think their fan base might be decreasing or losing engagement over time I haven't heard of anyone going, hey, I'm going to join Goblin Town now. Like what's the what's the reason for buying in now? You you like I, I don't even understand any of their announcements of their tweets because I I don't I can't spend the, the two minutes to read it. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me. Um but I'll be I'll be watching to see. I think one of the things I can expect to do is uh, or I, I can expect to see from them is I believe they'll they might change the way they, they structure it when it gets to the point to where they're hurting real bad. And they, I think at some point they'll have to listen to their, their holders and say, Hey, maybe we need to change the way we communicate going forward. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, that's almost part of, part of their brand at this point. I think um, they'll continue to build. I think they have a strong artist behind them and uh, it, it'll be interesting to see the world that kind of create. I think it's really just what the next, what the next steps are. Um, they don't have a roadmap, but I don't think that means they're not building and they're not trying to do a little bit of world creation. So seeing yeah. where that world creation leads is kind of the question mark. And I don't think there's going to be a lot of, you know, speculative price movement like we saw initially on their run up to, you know, almost eight ETH. Um, I don't think we'll see that until we have a bit more um, kind of clear cut picture of where they're heading. And I think they will make that cut clear over time. Um, you know, I think that they have a solid team behind them and they have, you know, solid art and story building. So it's just a matter of when, not if these will run back again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Ray, I think it, it is our time to 
wrap things up. Um, guys, if you're if you are just listening in now and, and you like what you're seeing, maybe you haven't really explored WGMI in the past, and we are minting now. Um, you can access all of this through an all access beta pass that's minting right now in our website, WGMI.io. Um, if you are maybe hesitant to jump in, um, but you want to try it out, um, feel free to DM us the word newsfeed. And um, we'd be happy to get your wallet address and possibly give you a little bit of a trial for you to try it out and see if you like it. Maybe give us some feedback on what you like um, and where we can add more value to you. But um, other than that, let us know how you like the show. We're trying to do this on a daily basis to try to give you get you guys caught up on everything that's going on within the NFT market in 30 minutes or less. Um it goes hand in hand with what we want to do, which is save you time and bring you value to your portfolio. So you're not missing anything um, related to your portfolio. Um, be Feel free to check us out on Discord as well. Let us know what you thought of the show. Let us know what you think of the tool. And uh, Ray, feel free to jump in um, if you have anything else to add. But if not, we will um, we'll wrap things up here. That's about it for me. I think we covered, covered the market this morning. Um, happy that... We, you know, kind of went through it pretty quickly, got got everyone after that slow start, got everything figured out. But um, thank you for joining us. 